Hey, fourth grade friends, it's time for math again. And now we're going to be doing lesson 10 of module seven. And much like what we've been talking about, we're going to be using conversions and looking at them in the context of word problems and what needs to happen first and next and all of that. So we're going to be combining our knowledge of conversions and our knowledge of multiple step word problems to answer some of these questions. So hang on to your hats. Here we go. So we're going to be doing lesson 10 of module 7, which is solving multiple step word problems. And we're going to be using a variety of uh, information. So today, on Saturday, Jeff used two quarts, one cup of water from a full gallon to replace some of the water that leaked from his fish tank. On Sunday, he used three pints of water from the same gallon. How much water was left in the gallon after Sunday? So as we look at this, we kind of need to figure out, well, what is it they're talking about? Because there's a lot here. So I know that I have two days. So I have Sunday, and I have a gallon of water. So I'm going to put a bucket here with a gallon here, and it's got one gallon. Now it says that on Saturday, he used two quarts and one cup. So on Saturday, two quarts and one cup came out of the gallon. And then on Sunday, three pints came out of it. And they want to know the answer to this question. They want to know how much water was left in the gallon. So after these things are taken out, well, how much is left? Well, before I can figure out any subtraction things, I need to find out how much was taken out. And I can't find that out with quarts and pints and cups because they aren't equal units. So if you remember when we had the gallons, the quarts, the pints, and the cups, when we looked at those, we said, good queens prefer chocolate. Remember that one gallon is the equivalent of four quarts. And four quarts is the equivalent of eight pints, and eight pints is the equivalent of 16 cups. So really, in one gallon, there are 16 cups. There are eight pints. So that would work for a gallon. But remember, um, we can further uh, draw that out by using um, our uh, abilities with multiplication and subtraction with ratios. If, if I had just one quart, I know that four times two is eight. So if I have only one quart, then I'm going to have two pints. And if I have one quart, I'm going to have four cups because I know that four times two times two is going to be the rule from quarts to pints, and times two is going to be the rule from pints to cups. And furthermore, I can say, well, if I only have one pint, then I would have two cups because I can multiply by two. So this information, this conversion will kind of help us as we're looking at this information. So as I'm looking at it from my brain, I think that I'm going to have to convert everything into cups because that's the lowest unit and or the smallest unit and I know that I can convert quarts into cups and I know that I convert pints into cups. So I have two quarts. So this says that I have one quart, I could have four cups. So if I have two quarts, I would have eight cups. So I know that two quarts would equal eight cups. And then I have that one cup more. So this total would be nine cups. That would make sense for me. Now over here, I have three pints. Well, it says that one pint is two cups. So if one pint is two cups, if I times one times three, then two times three would be six cups. So on this case, the pints would be three pints would be equivalent to six cups. So now I can take the six cups and the eight and the nine cups, and I can combine those together. So I have six cups plus nine cups, and that's going to be equivalent to 15 cups. So two quarts and one cup plus three pints is going to be equivalent to 15 cups. Am I done? No, because it didn't ask me how many cups I had. It asked me, how much water was left? So now I have to look at this conversion. Look, one gallon is equivalent to how many cups? You got it, it's equivalent to 16 cups and 15 cups were taken out. So how many cups would be left? Well, 16 cups minus the 15 cups that were taken out would leave me with one 
cup. So the answer to this question using step-by-step -step and my conversion chart, the answer would be one cup is left. An awful lot of math and an awful lot of thinking, all important because I can't get to this one cup without looking at all those conversions. Super important. All right, let's look at our next one. To make punch, Julia has poured one cup, one quart, three cups of ginger ale into a bowl and then added twice as much fruit juice. How much punch did she make it all? So I know that she's got ginger ale. So the ginger ale, I'll just put a G right here. And I know that in the ginger ale, she's put a certain quantity of ginger ale in there. I know that she's put in three cups of ginger ale. Oops, I'm sorry. One quart and three cups. One quart and three cups. That's how much ginger ale is in there. The next direction says, then she added twice as much. So of the fruit juice, I'll put an F for the fruit juice. I have all of the ginger ale. That's one quart and three cups, plus that much more because it's twice that amount, one quart and three cups. So I need to be able to add one quart and one quart and three cups and three cups, which when I add them together, I've got two quarts and six cups. Huh, that's not gonna work. Cause remember that whole gallon quarts, I'll go ahead and get it back from this other page. Remember this section here? In six cups is going to make more than one quart. It's gonna actually make one quart and then give me two cups left over. So I'm going to convert this because I know that four cups makes one quart. So that's gonna help me add one quart. And I'm gonna have two cups left over. So she is going to have three quarts and two cups. Am I done? No, because it didn't ask me how much fruit juice, it asked me how much did it all make? So now that I know how much fruit juice I have, three quarts and two cups, I can add that to the one quart and three cups that were in the ginger ale. And now I'm just gonna add that all up together. So I have five cups and I have four quarts. But I'm not done because I know that it takes four cups to make one quart. So if I take those four cups out so that I can add one more over here, then I'm gonna have one cup left. And the answer is going to be, she will have five quarts and one cup. But I can't get to this point, I can't add anything up until I know how much fruit juice she has, which is why it's important for me to take a step-by-step -step approach and look at what are they asking me. So the answer to how much punch did she make in all? She made five quarts and one cup right there. All right, let's look at the next one. Maya is four feet two inches tall. Her sister Allie is 10 inches taller and the little brother is half as tall as Allie. So how, much, how tall is the little brother in feet and in inches? So as I'm looking at this, I'm gonna take what I know. I've got Maya and Maya is, she is four feet, two inches tall. Her sister Allie is 10 inches taller. So she's just as tall as Maya, same size. So she's four feet two inches, but she's also 10 inches taller. So I'm gonna add 10 more inches. Now the interesting thing about inches to feet is I know that it takes 12 inches to equal one foot. 12 inches equals one foot. So I'm looking right here and I've got a two and a 10 and that already equals 12. So that is gonna equal one foot. And if I add four feet, to that one feet, I know that Allie is going to be five feet tall. But I'm not done because it's really not what it's asking. It says that their little brother is half as tall as Allie. How tall is the little brother? So I'm gonna put a B for brother, and I know that he's half as tall. So I'm gonna take the other half, which again, it's not drawn to scale, take that away. If this is five feet, well then how much is half of it? 
Well, you could divide it by two if you know how to do that. Or if you're not sure how to do that, I can say, well, here's zero, here's five, and on a number line, I can put one, two, three, four. And I know that if I were to jump back and forth, I would end up right between two and three. And right between two and three, between this one foot, there are 12 inches. And half of 12 inches is six. So if I go over two feet and six inches, two and one half feet, I will get half of five. So the brother is two feet and six inches because it asks me how tall is the little brother in feet and inches and he is half as tall as five feet which puts him right in between the two and the three which is two feet six inches again you have to solve one problem before you can get to the next problem all right and now we have rick and Lori have three dogs i wish this was an l for lisa like my dog but this is a d Diesel weighs 89 pounds, 12 ounces, and Ebony weighs 33 pounds, 14 ounces less than Diesel, and Luna is the smallest of the 10 pound, at 10 pounds and two ounces. What is the combined weight of the three dogs in pounds and ounces? So I went ahead and I got our tape diagram ready to help us kind of move along in the process, but Diesel is gonna have 89, and so she's got a long, he's got a long mount, that's, he's the biggest one. Now, Ebony is 33 pounds and 14 ounces less. So I don't know how much she weighs, but I know that if I take all of Diesel and I subtract 33 pounds and 14 ounces, I'm going to find out. So let's take care of that one first. I've got pounds and I've got ounces, and I'm going to use my T graph to help me figure it out. So I've got 89 and 12 ounces, and then I've got 33 and 14 ounces, and I'm going to subtract. Now the thing to remember is that it takes 16 ounces to make one pound. So I'm gonna go over to 89 and I'm gonna change it to 88 pounds and I'm gonna take the one pound I borrowed and I'm gonna put 16 ounces over here with the 12. When I add 16 ounces to that 12, it's actually gonna change that to be 28. And now I can take 14 from 28. And when I do that, eight minus four is four and two minus one is one, I have 14 ounces. Now 88, Minus 33 leaves me with 55. So I know that ebony is going to be 55 pounds and 14 ounces. Now, the third piece of information it says is that Luna is the smallest of the dogs and she weighs in at 10 pounds and 2 ounces. So again, the question is, what is the combined weight of the three dogs? Well, combined means I'm going to add it up. So I'm going to take 89 pounds and 12 ounces, because I'm gonna divide it up into pounds and ounces. I've got 55 pounds and 14 ounces, and 10 pounds and two ounces. And as I look at this, I'm looking right here. This is 16 right here. And I know that it takes 16 ounces to make one pound, so I'm gonna put that over there and add one right away, and then I just have 12 ounces. So now I have 89, and this one makes it 90. 90 and then 10 more makes it 100 and 155. So the answer to this question is that it is going to, if I combine all of the dogs, the dogs will weigh a combined amount of 155 pounds and 12 ounces. And there you have it, friends. Now, it's time for you to take the problems in your problem set. These were the homework questions and you're gonna do the problem set ones. The words are gonna be slightly different, but the concepts are going to be the same. There still will be one with pounds and ounces to add. So now it's your turn to grab your math books and get your practice going for lesson 10 in module seven. And as always, if you have any questions, don't forget to share it with us and let us know how you're doing.